From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive this thing called life with For the People. Whatever your source of stress or strife, For the People is there. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America. I am Keith Allen and proudly welcoming you into this Monday's edition of For the People on a November the 20th, 2017. A monster has died. Mel Tellis, by the way, was not a monster. I'm not talking about him. David Cassidy in ICU. Um, Charles Manson. Geraldo referred to him as a dog back in a late interview that I was watching and confronted him face to face. And if you want to see that interview, you can easily look it up on YouTube and just type in Charlie Charles Manson slash Geraldo. And that interview will come up, but it's, it's just unbelievable to think all these years have gone by. Uh, from some murders and some pretty bloody murders that happened in 1969. Some of you that have been around for a little while might remember the uh, nine bloodiest murders ever committed. One of them, a lovely actress named Sharon Tate, who, if you can remember, was uh, eight and a half months pregnant back then when his devoted followers chopped her up in tiny pieces and hung her upside down and the other victims were similarly savaged just uh unbelievable this guy had no remorse whatsoever for what he did the guy spent decades behind bars enjoying infamy among with generations of young people, for whatever reason, seduced by the fact that this murderous scum, as Geraldo calls it, coached his crimes in environment in anti-racist babble. He says, I hate the fact that despite the brutality of his crimes, or perhaps because of them, His face adorned what were some of America's biggest selling T-shirts, more popular than so many. Charlie was a charismatic snake charmer and articulate, eco-friendly, homicidal maniac who was part Jim Jones and part Adolf Hitler. Personally, he says, I feel no mercy for the lowlife who uh, was preserved and acted arrogant with no remorse. His twisted soul shined through the hateful swastika tattoo carved on his forehead between those glaring, piercing, beady eyes. He told me in our epic television 1988 face-to-face confrontation inside San Quentin that he could save our overpopulated planet if he could just kill 50 million of us. I told him that he was a mass murdering dog. He told me that if he didn't like the way that our interview was presented, he would have my head handed to my family in a basket. What did Geraldo tell him? He said, I told him that if anything happened to me and his roomies in this joint, we would set him on fire, the, what the Mexicans did to him in 1984. And Supposedly, he joined Area Nation, and they were made up with Mexicans, and they put lighter fluid on him. And, Too bad they didn't kill him back then. But to the notoriety and just the sick stories of women that came to visit him or added to his commissary and this, I mean, this is, uh, yeah, T-shirts. It it just to capitalize, just to think who would do something like that, capitalize of somebody that did something that heinous, that bizarre, Um, unfortunately, It's a uh, dark spot, as Geraldo puts it, in American psyche. 
and he's dead. And Geraldo says, in his words, at the end of this article, he says, Don't rest in peace, Charlie. Go instead to be with your friend, the devil. Go to hell. Unless that man repented and asked Jesus to forgive him, I think that's exactly where he's going. And anybody that has that in their hearts to kill in cold blood have no remorse whatsoever for it. It's 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 bizarre that there are people like that that still walk the face of the earth, and we learn about them. And unfortunately, this morning, we wake up to the news to learn that there is another border agent killed. And uh, this time, there was conflicting stories. We know he's dead. We know what happened at the border. Uh, an illegal immigrant uh, trying to go over, and uh, then another and another joined in on this assault, reportedly assaulted two U.S. Border Patrol agents with rocks, killing one, seriously injuring another Sunday. So that's the latest reports, and details around the attack remain murky. However, the FBI spokesperson said, Raguio Mardez, that uh, his partner were not shot, and a National Border Patrol Council official was telling KTSM that the the assailants were undocumented immigrants who used likely rocks to bash the agents. We strongly believe rocks were used. And folks, as I'm looking at the statistics now, 38 killed since 2003. This latest border killing makes it 39. So building the wall, folks, seems to be a very practical idea from those that come into our country, and this is the way that they want to come into the country. We have those that are felons. We have those that are gang-related, drugs, and they will come in any way they possibly can, and they don't care. And that was cold blood. The guy had a family. He was a human being. He was a U.S. citizen. And Trump has been very outspoken saying, we're building the wall. And this is why we're building the wall. And specifically, tweet today. It reads, Border Patrol officer killed at southern border, another badly hurt. We seek out and bring to justice those responsible. We will and must build the wall. So anybody that thought that Donald Trump might be a little bit lax in building that wall, make no mistake, the wall will be built. My heart goes out to the family and the families of both these officers. But this just uh, breaks my heart and a further reminder of how important it is that we have borders that are respected and are manned in a proper way. And if we can't man them with enough Border Patrol agents or technology, uh, the ball, the wall would just seem to be the, the most logical to be able to keep these people out from doing this. And this, folks, will continue to happen. We've been warned. Senator Cruz of Texas also released a statement calling the attack a stark reminder of the ongoing threat that an unsecure border poses to the safety of our communities and those charged with defending them. And just to think that there's a nasty group out there that is uh, buying land, buying land to try to keep the government from actually building a wall. Well, good luck with that. Good luck. They're going to have blood on their hands, American blood. This is not meant the wall to alienate a race a particular people it's to keep all our citizens over here no matter what race you are as it has to do with security ted cruz reiterated that donald trump has reiterated that and but of course the mainstream media they're not going to make a big deal out of this incident they're not going to add to the numbers they're not going to publish the numbers they won't talk about the numbers because It's not important to them because it's not their family member. It's not their neighbor. They don't live in the community. They could care less. 
And to me, that's a shame. Every life is precious, especially for those who protect us. And it was a Border Patrol officer that was just doing his job and got stoned to death at the border. Didn't have to use bullets. Use rocks, and what a hell of a way to go. Very, very sad. This is uh, should not be happening. Border Patrol records are showing that Big Ben accounted for about 1% or more than 61,000 apprehensions. Agents made along the southwest border in October 16 to 17. 61,000 arrests made. I mean, that's a lot of folks. The region's mountains and Rio Grande make a difficult area for people to cross illegally into the U.S. for Mexico. But there's large spans of border that are pretty unprotected for the most part. Ladies and gentlemen, if anybody ever tells you that the border... Uh, wall should not be built, remind them of now 38 deaths attributed to illegals killing our border patrol. That's a lot of people, a lot of body bags, a lot of families that will not have their father. I don't know about you, but that breaks my heart. And it should, it, it, it should break the heart of every listener. I just, I, I, you know, again, if we don't spend the time talking about it and focusing upon it, nobody else will. Very few will sit there and do it. But there is an attack, folks. There's an attack. It's not like they're escaping for their life. And because they're starved or anything like that of the sort, these people are gangs. These people litter up our streets. Filth up our neighborhoods and our communities. And this is the way that they want to enter our country. And folks, it's only going to get worse. And that's why Donald Trump is a visionary and has seen the necessity to be able to do these things, despite what the liberal snowflakes will say. It takes a visionary with somebody that has some cojones that will stand up and just seize it. In a practical manner. And it takes a businessman to be able to do that. You figure. Still complaining, obviously, about Donald Trump's style. Flake, which obviously is a flake. But uh, just can't control himself whatsoever. It's a shame. But here he is talking about the president. Come the party of Roy Moore and Donald Trump. We are the toast. Okay. Well, his good friend, Jason Chavis, uh, he was a former senator, of course, Fox News contributor, uh, friends with Flake, had this to say this morning. You know, this isn't necessarily a new position for Jeff Flake, but I don't think it's productive. I mean, they don't need a personal spat right now. We're trying to pass tax reform, and you got the president, Jeff Flake, with his own little personal battle. That's not helpful, nor is I think it Mm -hmm. effective. Of course, it's not effective. The president's just trying to get things done, but this is the monkey wrench that we've come to expect. And unfortunately, he's trying to get tax reform done, trying to get it passed. We need to get a win. This team needs to get a win. And I am praying for this president. I don't know about you, but it, this you know affects all of us here in this country. And if more people could just see the logic in that, that if the president does well, we all do well. I mean, that's just it's it's a very logical thing. Instead, there's all these initiatives to try to get the president. Uh, this is circulating widely in liberal media websites. Is it true? I had some liberals say that Donald Trump's going to be impeached. Is it true they're, you know, they're going to get him ejected for the White House? Is it true? I'm like, no, it's not true. They would like for that to happen. They would like to imagine that that's going to happen, that they could do that. But there's nothing to impeach him about. He hasn't broken any laws yet. Yet. And we hope to God he never does. I just can't imagine 